like we have 32 participants, which is great. And hopefully we'll have some uh, informative, uh, useful information to share with everybody today. Uh, if you have any questions throughout the meeting, down at the bottom of your screen, if you'll just click on that chat button down there, you can type the questions in there and we will answer them as we uh, have opportunity throughout the call. So just put your questions in the chat. We can all read them and whoever can answer those will um, will answer them accordingly. So thank you to everyone that joined with us today. I think we can get started and you can, everybody can see the screen I trust with the nice little uh, PowerPoint presentation we have here. So uh, go ahead, I guess, who's in charge? Kim, are you in charge of the slides? Yes. Adria? No, it's Kim, whatever you need okay. me to do. Yeah. All right, right, go ahead, just uh, scroll to the next one. All right, Angelo, welcome our members. <laughs> ah, you kind of stole my thunder there, Dan. <laughs> but uh, yes, welcome to everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, Pretty much AWFS has always been known for the trade show that we hold every two years. Uh, the trade show actually started back in 1957 in Los Angeles in the basement of the Ambassador Hotel. You know, and ever since then it's been in Southern California up until 2005 when the board actually voted to move the show to Las Vegas. But this really, this meeting really isn't about the show. I mean, yes, we're going to be talking about that. But it's really about the other things that AWFS does as an association to contribute to our industry. Most notably in the areas of education, public policy, and member services. Something else that I'm sure a lot of people don't know is that... Next year, we're going to be celebrating 110 years as an association, which is pretty remarkable. In fact, that made me think of um, a lot of things this morning, and I, I've known the history of this association since I've been here, obviously, in 2003. But uh, it made me look at things in a very different way. You know, needless to say, 2020 has not only been pretty tough, but it's affected every one of us to varying degrees. But uh, interestingly enough, if you look at our history, this is not the first pandemic we've actually been through as an association. The association started in 1911, and let me put this into a little bit of perspective here. After it was established for only three years, 1914 saw the start of World War I. And that lasted for four years. In 1918, when the war was over, the world was already in the midst of the Spanish flu pandemic. And by no means am I minimizing anything that we're going through today, because I know my own family has been affected by it. However, think about this. During that pandemic, a third of the world's population became infected. And as horrible as all the deaths have been up to this point, and God willing, we're getting close to the, close to the end, we would have to lose another 42 and a half million lives to equal what we lost in 1918, okay, at a time when the world population was not nearly what it is now. And then I thought about that, and I thought about the fact that after that, you had maybe 10 good years, and you had the 1929 market crash, followed in the 30s by the Great Depression, and then in the 40s by another world war. And lately, of course, you know, skipping a few decades, you go into the Great Recession that I know a lot of us, if not all of us, experienced and how devastating that was to our industry. And now we have COVID. But I guess 
the inspiring part of all of that, if you can believe I can even use that word with all citing all of those difficult events, is that through it all, the association not only lasted, but so did our industry and it thrived. Even if we had some really terrible, terrible times along the way, which speaks volumes to the resilience and strength of the people that have always been part of this association and the industry as a whole. So with that, when I look at it from that perspective, I see things a little bit differently than maybe I did even yesterday. So having said that, the one thing that I will say, um, the last 10 years, or I'm sorry, 17 years since I've been here, we've seen a lot of ups and downs. But the one consistency that I've had, and I've always been very fortunate to have, is that I've always been surrounded by some great people, whether it's been our board, uh, who've been outstanding volunteers, or a just exceptionally gifted and talented staff. So I'm very grateful for that. Anyway, having said all that, um, basically, if you have any questions, as Dan said, as we get down to the very end, we will address those in the chat box. And uh, in the meantime, I'm going to turn it back over to Dan um, Hirschberger from Weinig, and he's gonna pretty much take care of the meeting from here on out. Thank you, Dan. There we go. All right, thank you, Angelo. Uh, good overview. I think if this is your first time ever attending one of our meetings, you'll see that uh, we are so much more than just a trade show in Las Vegas. Uh, our organization is very diverse and represents quite a broad spectrum of our industry. And our board is made up of people from all facets of the woodworking industry, not just the machinery side, but all the people that supply goods and services to our industry. And what we're gonna do now is we're, we have uh, numerous committees that uh, perform very important functions within our industry. And I think it'll be good for everybody to get a little insight and an inside perspective of what the different committees are that we have. And uh, so we're gonna get started with Mr. Brian Joyce, who is uh, the head of our trade show committee chair. And we'll let Brian give us an update because I'm quite sure everybody is curious where we stand and what's going on. So Brian, uh, I don't think we can see you, but we can hear you just fine. So go ahead. Yeah, I apologize for not having the camera side work, but uh, first, thank you, Angelo and Dan. I appreciate uh, the welcome and to everybody participating. Um, I will give the AWFS trade show report for our upcoming 2021. Uh, Brian, we lost you. Brian. How's that? Can you hear me? There you go. Try it again. What did, did it, did you hear any of the start Dan? We heard that you'll, I'll give the update and then you disappeared. All right, well, we'll leave it. We'll start from there. I'll give the update. So um, I have the following to report. I'll start with the uh, uh, sales update. Uh, back in April, we had our largest space draw since 2009. So very encouraging uh, draw. Uh, our floor, floor space currently is 86% sold. Another good sign. Uh, from the sponsorship side, sales are at 17% compared to our last show. Uh, but there's reason behind that. Uh, the sponsorship brochure will be finalized shortly and our exhibitors will receive that and our promotions will take off uh, once that is presented. Also, our hanging banner inventory, because we're in the new hall, has yet to be released. Once that gets out in early 2021, we'll be sure to see a significant boost in sponsor sales. So that's our, our trade show uh, sales. Uh, update at this time. I have other information I can share as well. Uh, the AF, AWFS FAIR org website and the overall 2021 FAIR campaign will both launch simultaneously in January. And this will be, this will prove to be uh, real, really impactful for uh, the start of our preparation for the show. Uh, currently all content on our website uh, is current, but stay tuned for a fresh new look 
really soon here. The AWFS staff continues to work diligently with all trade publications and industry media regarding fair information, and this will remain a top priority as we move closer to July. The opening of the AWFS fair attendee registration will also be happening very soon. We are looking into a new improved registration format for both the attendees and the exhibitors. Additionally, the widely successful um, invite a customer program will be offered again with uh, some, new, uh, some new additions to it as well. Registration for the exhibitors will open later this month or at the beginning of January. So we're excited about that. A brief note about housing. Um, Housing will be opened up in a few more days as well. And we're excited to announce that it will include the brand new Resort World property as our newest hotel addition. The Las Vegas hotels are still finding their way through this current pandemic situation and are in the process of determining room rates, procedures for the citywide room blocks for our shows. Um, We've decided to open a one large block of rooms at the Resorts World and then bring on the other properties as needed to fulfill the request. Uh, the AWFS team is working closely with each of the properties to ensure that all our attendees uh, have a place to stay at the lowest possible rate. As you can imagine, continued changes regarding in-person gatherings and interactions uh, are happening around the country. Las Vegas Convention Center and the city of Las Vegas are making uh, uh, changes as well. So the AWFS staff continues to monitor these changes closely and is committed to hosting the cleanest and safest show possible for all our attendees and exhibitors. Highest priority for us. Regarding the College of Woodworking Knowledge and the smart sessions, planning has begun. Many sessions and speakers are under consideration and we promise to deliver a strong, relevant program to all our attendees with a variety of choices. We're equally excited about the Freshwood 2021 event. Freshwood planning has begun with our initial focus on finding judges. So if anybody is interested or can recommend someone, please contact Adam or Adria uh, with a name. And lastly, uh, I'd like to thank everybody in the woodworking industry and all of you on this call for your continued support of the AWFS in our upcoming 2021 fair. Uh, as I said, we're excited and enthusiastic that this will happen in person and look forward to seeing everybody at that time. So thank you. With that, I'll open it up to Kim or Amy if they may have any additional news that they wanna add. Thank you, Brian. I think you covered it all. I appreciate you being the TATRO chair. Thank you. I think the one thing that we need to stress is that the show is going on as planned. Um, we are well aware of the circumstances and everything that's going on and we are monitoring it to see what's happening. But as of today, the show is going on as we have always planned until we, unless we hear otherwise, but as we sit here today, uh, AWS show in 2021 will take place. Okay, Brian, thank you for the update. I appreciate that. Let's move on to our next, and that would be our education committee with Mr. Rob Howell. We got a lot of great things to report. And Rob, go ahead, give us an update from the education committee. All right, Dan, thank you. Um, hopefully everybody can hear me. We can hear you good. Mike. Okay, great. Thanks, Brian, for the update for the trade show. Sounds exciting and we're looking forward, I think everybody to getting back in person and uh, having a great show in 2021. Um, so I'm here today to speak about the AWFS Educational Committee. Um, just, uh, I put the strategic goal up here for 2020 and 2021, um, provide professional development and educational opportunities to meet the evolving needs of our members in the industry. Um, one thing I'd like to say is that since we have a, a number of people that this might be the first meeting for them, um, you know, if you can participate and give back uh, some time to these committees, it will definitely pay off in the future. So if you can take part in some of the committees, um, really, that's something you should do to give back. Um, just to recap some of the things that we've done in 2020 and some of the accomplishments that uh, 
our committee and our staff have done. Um, it's been a little bit of a challenging year, as, as some of you can uh, understand as educators, uh, more online learning and, uh, you know, all the events are online with Zoom. And sometimes this can be difficult because, you know, you have technical difficulties like we've had some today. Um, but everybody's had to adapt and it's sometimes difficult for our industry because we're more of a hands-on industry. So it's, it's, it's uh, a learning experience, I think, for all. Just to kind of hit on some of those things that we've done for 2020, um, hosted the career in the classroom events, which is a, another virtual event that we accomplished this year. Um, we've done production of additional videos with Q Career, uh, industry pro interviews. Q Career is a, is a platform where stu students learn about uh, careers in our industry. So it's something you may wanna jump online and take a look at. Um, one of the things that we also did was completed a successful Design It Digital student CAD uh, competition, which Adam and, and Adria were involved in uh, as part of the staff, which did an outstanding job. Um, we've also exhibited in um, ASCA, which is the American School Counselor Association, um, with virtual career counseling conferences and the Technical Educational Career Tech Vision. Uh, conference. So we've done both uh, ASCA and also ACTE this year. Um, the 2019 event we did it in person, and then in 2020 we had we had a virtual event. Um, so those are two things that we exhibited in. Um, some of the other things that we've done is promoted and supported the wood industry for manufacturing uh, day events. Um, so that's something that if you haven't taken part in. Again, we strongly suggest that you participate. Um, we presented an ASCA career, your student needs to know webinar. So something again with the American uh, School Counselors Association. And just a couple of other things that aren't on the list or bullet points there is that we gathered statewide data and testimonies to defend Nevada school woodworking programs. So we, we need everyone's support uh, to keep these programs available for our students in all states, not just Nevada, because they're in jeopardy right now due to the uh, pandemic. Um, ongoing partnership and engagement with various industry and uh, educational associations and school district advisory committees. So those are some of the things that we've accomplished in 2020. Um, and then we've also went on to look at what, what we're going to try to uh, look forward to in 2021. Um, we're going to launch the Work Industry uh, Wide Career Awareness Campaign in spring of 2021, which you should start to, at that time to look for the, uh, the site on the web. And that will help to attract and retain employees, which is really a difficult thing right now to find employees for our industry and improve the perception of the woodworking industry. Um, we will also be working to provide more details. It's not another bullet that's not on there on apprenticeship programs in our industry. So look more towards that because it's, it's becoming something of interest for a number of uh, companies that are looking for employees. So apprentice programs in 2021. More communication about AWFS educational efforts and activities for 2021 and ways to engage teachers and students remotely and through the AWFS fair. So those are some of the, the key points that we're looking for in 2021 for the educational commit, uh, committee. This was just a quick recap on what's been done in 2020 and what's to come in 2021. Um, to join the educational committee um, and participate in quarterly calls and educational activities, um, which again, I strongly suggest you do. Um, you can contact Adria at adria at awf.org, which you see on the PowerPoint presentation. But again, I strongly suggest that uh, everyone gets involved and uh, it'll make a difference in our industry. And that's it, uh, Dan, unless somebody has questions. Anybody have any questions for Rob? Okay, great. 
Uh, it's obvious from Rob's brief uh, overview, there's a lot of things going on in the education world, which is critically important to our industry and the future success of our industry. So thank you, Rob. Uh, glad to see all the, the organization is doing. All right, moving on in our presentation, we have Mr. Jim Irving, who's gonna give us an update on our membership services. Jim, go ahead. Well, thank you. Good morning, everybody. Um, membership services committee is focused on improving the benefits of being an AWFS member and trying to grow our family of member companies. Um, the committee together with our <clears throat> ACE AWFS staffers, Kim and Angela, work towards this objective every single day. The focus of AWFS as an organization is to support the wood ring industry. And we feel that one of the best ways we can do that is by growing the number of member companies in the association. So towards that end, we're continually working on trying to enhance the basket of benefits to enhance your AWFS membership. So just to get you up to date, as of this morning, uh, AWFS membership is 340 different member companies. And one of the changes that we made this year, enhancements, is we allowed companies to go ahead and sign up for a second year of membership ahead of time. We've received some really positive feedback about that, and that it makes things easier for companies that they get to do two years, basically a, a two-year deal at a time instead of having to try to redo that annually. And if I could take just a minute or two and, and kind of highlight us some of the benefits of your AWFS membership. We publish an AWFS newsletter regularly uh, called the Supplier's Edge, and it comes out several times throughout the year. We've redesigned that new letter, newsletter and updated both the look and the format of it. Uh, you should be able to look for that next edition of the new letter, newsletter coming out in early 2021. Uh, one of the format changes we made is we added uh, a section called the Shop Pet to the newsletter. And uh, we rolled this out in the last edition over the summer with Todd the Doodle from uh, member Kyle Toth's shop in the newsletter. And it was a big hit. We look forward to doing that uh, just kind of just a fun little uh, attribute of our, our newsletter that uh, kind of improves the relationship for everybody in the organization. So look for this in future editions of the newsletter and in our social media campaigns. Additionally, AWFS publishes a regular blog known as the Roundup that updates our membership with news and information that's of importance to our industry. The Roundup and the newsletter is also a section uh, on our website that you can access. If you go to, if, if you're looking for the, uh, for the roundup, you can go on the AWFS org website under the newsroom tab and find that. If you're looking for the newsletter, it's uh, located under the, uh, it's, I think it's still eight. Uh, Kim, isn't that on the newsroom tab too? Yes, Jim, you're correct. Sorry. Yep. All right, I just got the host muted me. I don't know if he, it was my signal that my time's up or what, but. Uh, no, that was also <laughs> me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I won't take it personally. Um, so the latest addition to our portfolio of member services is the newly created job board. And all of us in the industry know that recruiting and attracting talent it's always been hard, but it's probably never been more difficult than it is right now. So the job board is a free resource and it's available to both employers and job seekers in the woodworking industry. So you can find the job board if you go again to the AWFS website under the tools and resources tab. The uh, membership services committee is continually reviewing which benefits mean the most to our members and which don't. We're always working on trying to uh, add new benefit options and we'll continue to do so just to try to enhance the value of your AWFS membership. Renewal packets for 2021 went in the mail last week and you should start seeing those coming into your and hitting your desk this week. And inside these packets, there's a complete list of all of our current member benefits as well as some additional important members for all of our, our information for our member companies. Kim, Angela, what did I miss? 
Nothing. You're wonderful. <laughs> Thank you for being our chair. Oh, no Thank problem. You. Really enjoy it. Thank you, everybody. And thank you, members. I have to unmute myself. There we go. Thank you for the update, Jim. Again, lots of things going on with the Membership uh, Services Committee. And thank you for that. Our next presentation is, is public policy. And Bob Brown is the head of that committee but Bob is not able to be with us today. So um, uh, Wade Gregory is gonna give us the update on public policy. And let me tell you, he is more than capable. So Wade, go ahead and give us an update, please. Well, first of all, like Brian, I'd like to apologize for my camera. Unfortunately, I'm apologizing because mine is on. Uh, and, uh, but anyway, just please bear with me. I did put on a good shirt, change the sock in my brace and uh, and I do have Bob's uh, report here that I'll try to muddle through. Because uh, uh, I was, uh, I think I was the public policy chairman beginning in 2001 for a few years. So, but I've remained on, on the committee since then. So uh, when Angelo asked me to do this, I was more than happy to. Anyway, uh, despite all the challenges with the pandemic, uh, AWFS was able to remain productive in our public policy efforts especially thanks to our partnership with Lobbyist, which is, uh, I have a hard time saying this, advocacy agency in Washington, DC. Uh, we have actively monitored the evolution of the stimulus funding packages and the Paycheck Protection Program, which many companies within our industry were able to utilize. Hey, we've lost you. You've lost me? There you go, now try it again. Okay, uh, did you hear a Paycheck Protection Program? Can you hear me? I can. Yes. And I did. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I'll back up just a little bit. We have actively monitored the evolution of the stimulus funding packages and the Paycheck Protection Program, which many companies within our industry utilize. We have made our voice heard with key legislatures that the needs of small companies and manufacturers must be considered in this important legislation. Likewise, we've been active in supporting various workforce development legislation, including the Partners Act, the Jobs Act, the Counseling for Career Choice Act, for which, by the way, we published a press release in support of that, uh, the Skills Renewal Act, and the National Apprenticeship Act of 2020, which passed in the House in late November. Additionally, we have engaged with the National Skills Coalition an organization focused on supporting skilled workforce development. AWFS staff participated in their virtual DC fly-in and in the California Advocacy and Police Academy and Policy Academy, a one-year program which empowers nonprofit organizations to better understand and impact workforce development legislation. In the coming year, we plan to host our first ever virtual DC fly-in in the spring. And we will also continue to monitor and advocate for workforce development legislation that will strengthen our industry and member companies. We look forward to learning more about the new administration's agenda and members of the 117th Congress so that we can be most effective in our public policy efforts. With that, I'd like uh, Adria to step in and um, add, add her comments. And uh, for all of you who may be unaware, uh, many times these committee chairs take uh, take the credit for some of these what the, the committees do, but in reality, um, you know, staff is many times the backbone of what goes on in these committees. Uh, and I certainly wish that uh, Adria would have been around back in uh, 2001 when I was uh, the, the chairman. So with that, Adria, do you want to add some comments? That was very kind, Wade. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And I appreciate you being here today. And um, we're so thankful to Bob as our, our current chair and, and Rob Howell as our past um, immediate past chair. So please, I would just add, please get involved. If you are interested in public policy and what we're doing, then please join us and reach out to me um, to learn how to do that. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Now on to uh, the regulatory update. Uh, AWFS over the years has been involved in a number of regulatory issues, uh, 
including such things as wood dust standards, uh, flame retardant standards for upholstery foam, foams and top of the bed items. And for nearly 20 years, and just about the time that I came into the association, we've been dealing with formaldehyde emissions from composite panels. In 2001, <laughs> WFS joined the California Woodworking Industry Coalition, which was a group of about 10 to 15 industry associations with similar interests to, uh, to us, all in the woodworking or related industries. Uh, this was, we first uh, joined this or started this so, uh, coalition to first oppose and then assist in the development of the California Air Toxic Control Emission Standard or standard for formaldehyde exposure from composite wood products. Uh, later, via what then became the Federal Woodworking Industry Coalition or Woodwork, we supported the development of a similar federal uh, standard, which was otherwise known as the federal EPA Hospital Title VI. Um, and, and last year, EPA began another risk assessment of formaldehyde. But there again, in this case, WIC was able to step in and convince the EPA that products that are already covered under this TOSCA Title VI are basically regulated enough and should be excluded from this further uh, risk assessment study, which could have cost our members um, not only uh, money, but also cause some new, some additional hardships. So, uh, and EPA agreed with that. And, and so we're, we're very pleased that everything, and when I say composite products here, I'm talking about hardwood, plywood, particle board, MDF, and hardboard. Hardboard is the only one that is not exempted at this time, but hardboard today is mostly uh, made with very low levels and, and much of the time exterior uses. So we don't see that as a problem going forward. Um, so it looks like we're good. And I would also say Adria, and I know she, I got it today and I don't know if she posted it uh, in base camp for everyone to access, I hope so. But the CPA president, uh, Andy O'Hare, just uh, put out yesterday their uh, an article which includes their regulatory update. And uh, so if anybody's got any more issue or any more questions or wants to learn more about uh, the uh, composite panels and formaldehyde, uh, they, I suggest that you, uh, you look at that. Um, that said, for the past four years, uh, our industry has seen a reprieve uh, from over-regulation. Uh, and in many areas, uh, experience as they ask, actually experience a lessening of stringent rules. Um, everyone that I've spoken to and listened to recently uh, expect that uh, will no longer be the case under the new administration. Um, it is expected that Biden will be more industry and manufacturing friendly than some of the other Democratic candidates. But he still made some promises during his campaign that cannot be ignored. And of course, one of the big ones was early on, he said he was against fracking. And uh, then later he's changed his mind. And I think very smart on his part uh, that he was not uh, against fracking. And, you know, um, fracking has, has allowed the U.S. to basically become, uh, you know, almost uh, totally uh, oil in, independent. Uh, and not dependent on um, the Middle East or, or other producing areas. It's kept our industry, our uh, energy costs down, natural gas, oil, gasoline, everything, electricity, which is, has really helped uh, over these last few years. So hopefully we won't see anything really change there. Um, but um, anyway, although in, increased uh, regulation will cause some issues for our manufacturing and, and uh, but uh, I mean, there's no doubt about that. But there's, but there's also, it brings on a lot of new opportunities uh, for new products and new systems. And so I expect to see as we go forward, you know, there's gonna be more emphasis on energy conservation, sustainability, carbon footprints, lower emissions, and um, you know, other friendly, uh, you know, products and practices. Um, so, it's, it's not a totally bad thing. I think if everybody puts on their thinking caps and sort of looks at this and 
And if it doesn't swing too far the wrong direction, I think there's something can really good come out of this. Because we have certainly seen with regulation, we've seen it drive new technology. We've seen it open up areas for other products to come in. And so I think that that's, uh, you know, there is really gonna be some, some good things uh, coming in out there. Uh, also, I would like to invite uh, all the members, if you do see either current or new legislation coming on or regulation coming on that you think might uh, affect your business, then uh, don't be afraid to uh, approach uh, AWFS and the Public Policy Committee. I mean, there may be something that we can help do about it. Uh, it's, uh, usually it's through alliance with other industry associations because one thing over the years with uh, our lobbying efforts in the, in uh, the uh, in, in Washington DC and also much in Sacramento we found out that you know legislatures uh, tend to think that you know the 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 needs of the many far outweigh the needs of the few or of the one and especially around election time so um, it's uh, but it does work uh, and and uh, you know, we, we do get it all. So um, with that, that's the end of, uh, end of my report. And um, there again, Adria, if you want to add anything or if there's any questions, that's all. Okay, thank you, Wade. Uh, that committee public policy has a lot on their plate and they really keep, do a good job of keeping on top of uh, events and things that are relevant and important that can really affect our business now and in the future. All right, moving on with our program. The next is called the Society of Wood Manufacturing or commonly referred to as SWIM. And we have Carl Fry and Saul Martin. I think only Carl is with us today. So Carl, go ahead. Let's have an update from SWIM, please. Thank you, Dan. Um, so the Society of Wood Manufacturing is, is a fairly new subcommittee of AWFS, and it's comprised of educators, uh, suppliers, and people in the wood manufacturing industry themselves. Um, we have about 85 members total. Um, right now, it's a chapter in Southern California, which is most active, and that's about half the membership. And currently we've been meeting virtually on Zoom once a month. And um, our goal is to help promote the wood industry and starting at the education level in high school. So a lot of our members are wood shop teachers, either in high schools or colleges. Um, and then the rest of us are in the industry either as a supplier or work in wood manufacturing. And it's a great group to belong to. It's it's fun. We we have done a lot of things. So uh, at the end of 2019, I'll start with uh, we exhibited at the CASC uh, School Counselor Conference. Um, we believe one of the things that we need to uh, approach is to let basically high school counselors know that you know, taking wood shop or wood industry classes is a viable path for a lot of students in the future. Uh, we find a lot of them look at that as something that that's old fashioned and, you know, it's just some old guy with an apron and a, and a coping saw. And it's not a path for students when really it is. We're letting them know about CNC machinery and, and that it ties in with some of the technical things that they're offering in high schools. Um, um, we participated in last year's uh, manufacturing day. We helped companies do it like Jim Irving at uh, DBS did a great job. Another local company, um, Reboard and Cabinets, they put on a great manufacturing day. Uh, so we could bring students in and they can see firsthand, you know, what actually happens in a shop. And then in this year, um, we, we organized and executed the 2020 regional competitions. Um, currently that's gonna happen virtually for the first time that I know of. Um, members uh, got together and we, we gathered up like $50,000 in donations and supplies that we could give to high schools around the state of California, comprised of 
you know, lumber, uh, hardware, glue, sandpaper, uh, whatever you needed um, to create a project for, for the schools that are going to do some of their classes virtually, which I know for, for educators, that's somewhat of a challenge. So we're trying to make that happen. Uh, we produced a career awareness video for Manufacturing Day. It was an outstanding video. You could click a link to it on the awfs.org website. Um, so it gave an idea of here's what actually happens in today's wood shops. Uh, along with that, we hosted three Manufacturing Day in October virtually. Uh, a lot of different sessions were people or students could log in and ask questions of, of the hosts. Um, and that was a pretty good deal um, where students actually didn't know what happened in there and they didn't know what their path was, but now they've got an idea of what could be possible. Uh, we exhibited virtually at um, GPS Your Future, uh, a virtual career awareness event. Um, and then we, you know, meet monthly virtually. In fact, we met last night and last night was more of a, a social gathering. Um, we took care of business, but we also have some fun. We had some great holiday games that we played and there was some very, very generous prizes given out. So if you're not attending the swim meetings or missing out on some, some pretty cool stuff, we do great stuff for the industry as well as, we, you know, we like to get together socially where we can locally. And what we're looking to do uh, in the 2021 is um, again conduct uh, Skill USA uh, competitions. That's something that we're heavily involved in, um, and really, like Rob had mentioned, because uh, we're really kind of an extension of of the education committee, um, is exploring ways to engage with teachers and their students remotely. Because that's all we can do right now for the next few months. So we're doing some great stuff. Um, anyone can join uh, the Society of Wood Manufacturing. You don't necessarily have to be a member of AWFS. Um, and we're looking for, for to expand. If you're not in Southern California, uh, we're looking at how to uh, create chapters in other areas of the country. So if you have questions, you can get a hold of Adam Kessler um, and his email address is on that slide there or you can go to awfs.org education slash swim. That's it for me. Am I forgetting anything, Adam? I guess it's all good. It's all thank, good. You, Carl. thank you, Carl. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and I see Saul is on the call. So Saul, thank you for your uh, help and participation with the swim organization. I know you are a critical key part of their success and what they do. So thank you. Well, all thank right, you. well, that uh, is all of the committee reports that we have. And if, there you go, Kim puts up the next slide. You can see that we are always looking for volunteers. We have a lot of uh, committees, as you can tell, we just ran through the reports. You can see we're always looking for good volunteers, people that are willing to get in and get involved and uh, contribute. So if you have an interest, please contact anyone at AWFS and they will be glad to assist you and let you know where we can use you. So thank you for all those committee chair people and their reports. All right, moving on to the last slide, which is just a thank you to everyone that participated today. We had a lot of people here and we thank you for taking time about 50 minutes out of your day to be with us and just get an overview of the organization and what's going on. Angelo, before we sign off and tell everybody thank you, goodbye, do you have any closing comments you'd like to make? Is Angelo even still with us? <laughs> I want it, can you hear me? Yeah, we got you now, go ahead. Okay, now I think you, you covered, uh, you pretty well covered it. The one thing I will say is um, I also would like to thank all of our volunteers and once again um, emphasize how important it is for us to have volunteers work with our staff and it's been a great relationship between the the two. Um, we got some really great exciting things going on and you already saw and uh, I think everybody got a pretty good idea of everything that we have happening. 
got a lot of, we got some big plans for the future here. So um, again, you're welcome to reach out to me at any time if you're thinking about volunteering or want to learn more or our staff, board members, and uh, whether it's through phone, email, or even at our upcoming show in July, um, you're always welcome to reach out. So thank you very much. Okay. Well, again, thank you to everybody for participating. That is the formal final finish to our meeting. Thank you for visiting with us today. And again, if you would like to join with us and volunteer, just let us know. Otherwise, everyone have a great day wherever you are. Thanks for participating.